Yes, the answer to the title of this video is yes, I think. No, no, they definitely are better. Is it marginal? Probably, I, I think so. Truthfully, I don't really know. That's kind of something that I'm struggling with as a Heat fan right now, and that's why I wanted to make this video. Because we just saw the trade deadline where the Heat did nothing. Of course, they got Terry Rozier a couple weeks ago. We'll get into that. But I'm watching guys like Bohan Bogdanovich get moved for nothing. I'm watching guys like Monty Morris go for a second round pick. Xavier Tillman go to the Boston Celtics for a couple second round picks. And I'm sitting here saying that he could have used those guys. Why is Pat Riley still in bed? Why is Mickey Harrison being cheap? And it's frustrating. But then I think back to last year where I said the same thing. And who was left standing in the NBA Finals but the Miami Heat? Who took down the Boston Celtics? Who took down the Milwaukee Bucks? So I'm struggling right now, truthfully, with how I feel about this team. And that's why I wanted to make this video to kind of rant and ramble and get y'all thoughts down below so we can kind of come to a conclusion together. Because I like to pride myself on being the, re the realistic person in this heat content creation space because there's a lot of great people, but most of them have agendas. You got the positive side, the sunshine pumpers. You got the negative side that will hate the front office no matter what. But as the realistic guy, I can't sit here and say this front office sucks because I said the same thing last year and they made the finals. So that's something I'm kind of struggling with. So here's the facts. I'm going to sit here and give you reasons why I think this Heat team is better than last year. But when you look at the winning percentage, they're actually slightly worse at this point of the season than they were last year. Last year after the trade deadline, the Miami Heat were 30 and 25, which is a winning percentage of 54%. This year, the Miami Heat are currently 28 and 24, which is a winning percentage of only 53%. So again, only one percentage point difference. So they're basically the same. But here I am about to give you a bunch of reasons why I think they're better. Again, here we go with the, the whole dynamic and me struggling with what I think of this team. So we'll kind of start with what the Miami Heat lost last season. First, we'll talk about Gabe Vincent, who Heat fans forget because he had such a great playoffs. He was actually pretty poor in the regular season. He only shot 40% from the field and 33% from three. Now, obviously, he was a great defender. But when you compare him to who his kind of replacement is this season, if you want to say it's Josh Richardson, sort of like a loose comparison, Josh Richardson, I think, has actually been slightly better. Now, defensively, Josh Richardson's not as good. He's obviously not doesn't have as big a role as Gabe Vincent. Gabe Vincent was the consistent starter for most of last season. But Josh Richardson this year is shooting 45 percent from the field and 35 percent from three. So while those aren't way better than Gabe Vincent, they're significant enough. And I know a lot of Heat fans are hating on Josh Richardson because those numbers aren't great, but he's a minimum contract guy. I think if you can get eight points a game on 45 percent from the field from a minimum contract guy, that's way more than you can ask for. So I personally have been happy with Josh Richardson's tenure, here, and I think he's been a solid piece. Now, another name that a lot of Heat fans talk about missing is Max Struess. Max Struess, same as Gabe Vincent, he did not have a good regular season. He only shot 35% from three. That's why the Heat were into playing. And obviously he did pick it up come postseason. And a lot of Heat fans were mad that Mickey didn't want to shell out a bunch of money to pay him. I really wasn't because I believe that you could find some other shooting. And the Heat did with Duncan Robinson, who by the way, is having a way better season than Max Struess this year. And then he personally had himself last year. Because Max Struess this year, He's shooting 33% from three on high volume. That's terrible. That's as bad as Duncan Robinson was last year. So I guess point two of why I think the Heat are better this year than last year is the improvement of Duncan Robinson, who last year shot 37% from the field and 33% from three. God awful numbers, hence why he was getting DNP coaches decisions. But this year, Duncan Robinson's at 45% from the field and 40% from three. That is significantly better than what Max Struess did last year and what Duncan Robinson did last year. Now, obviously, Duncan's role has been weird and consistent this season. He just had a couple injuries, had the concussion. I would like to see him personally get more into the rotation and play at least 30 minutes a night because I think he is that impactful. I mean, truthfully, I, I want him to start over Tyler Hero, but that's not going to happen. But I think as we get to the second half of the season, Spolster will find a way to kind of work him in more. That's another point I should bring up. 
we can acknowledge how weird the Heat are, the first half of the season could be completely different from the second half of the season. If we wanna talk about some internal developments, last year's Bam at Bow and this year's Bam at Bow, pretty similar statistics wise, same amount of points per game, hovering right around 20. Last year, Bam was at about 54% from the field. This year, he's at about 51. So you've had a little bit of a drop in efficiency, but obviously that's because Bam's taken a lot more jump shots than he did last year. You could say that's a good thing. You could say that's a bad thing. I think Bam still needs to work on finding the perfect balance of getting to the rim and taking the mid-range jump shot. So hopefully that's something he improves on. But the first half of Bam at a bio last year was way better than the second half. He dropped off completely, not completely, but by a large margin. Kind of the same with this year. If you look at the first couple months of Bam at a bio, very efficient score. The, the mid-range jump shot was smooth as butter, Chris Bosh S and of late over the last month or two, it hasn't been great. So maybe come second half of the season, after the All-Star break, he can get a lot better. Tyler Hero, start of the season, I thought very improved. Had the ankle injury and the efficiency has kind of dropped off since. And now he's hovering around the exact same averages as last year, other than his three-point percentage being a little bit better. And Jimmy is Jimmy. He'll be there come postseason. We don't really got to speak on him too much. So as far as your core three, I feel like those are pretty similar than last year. So I don't feel like you got a lot of internal development there. Now, I do want to also note Victor Oladipo was a, was a guy that the Heat lost since last year. People seem to forget him and they only talk about Struess and Gabe. I love what Depo brought to this team. Unfortunately, he obviously had a lot of injury concerns. And while he is currently a free agent and I would love him on this team, even for the vibes, I know I've heard a lot of people say that too, you can't have another guy in this season who can't contribute uh, because you already got Drew Smith, who's obviously out for the season with the ACL injury. So if there's any sort of update on Oladipo that maybe he could potentially play soon, then that's a guy that I, would, I think uh, I would love to have back. Fortunately, we haven't really heard no news on him. Now, some of the additions that you did get, one, Kevin Love. Obviously, you got him late last year in the buyout market, but now having him in a full training camp, he's played a full season. I'm very happy with Kevin Love's tenure so far. Obviously, he's not playing too many minutes a night at his age. I think he's hovering around 15 to 20, but I think the three-point shooting has been better. He's picked it up as late. Uh, you love the facilitating, the outlet passes that he does. He's still an incredible rebounder. And overall, just his veteran savvy and IQ, I think is almost tangible on the court. You'll see him draw these charges. You'll see him in the huddle. I really love what Kevin Love brings. And I think come postseason is when we'll really see his true value, kind of like we did last year. You know, being able to get into the lane to draw charges, pick up on Giannis, help build that wall. I think he's very valuable against that team. You also brought in who I think is the most important piece and saying that this Heat team is better than last season. And that's Kamehame Hakez Jr. Now I understand since Hame went out with the groin injury, he hasn't been the same, but I think that's mostly because you had other guys come back. You had Jimmy Butler come back. You had Bam Adebayo and Kayla Marin and Josh Richardson come back. And because of that, Hame's role is not as big as it once was. Now he's still getting the playing time. He's still playing close to 30 minutes a night, playing a lot of the fourth quarter, but he's not getting as many touches as he was earlier. Earlier in the season when everyone was hurt, he was getting the ball in the post. He was able to face up or back down, get to the rim. He was shooting 40% from three, which I still think he is or very close to it still. So the shooting numbers have been good but he's an excellent isolation score. And I've seen enough from him in the first couple months of the season to say that that dude is a baller. And I think he's better this year than Gabe and Max were last year. So him alone, I think is a major, major upgrade. You recording right now? I am. Oh, that boy is swole. Kentucky's gonna beat Gonzaga today. Heck you out. Oh. I thought you were about to kiss me just now. And I know I said Hame Haquez might be the biggest upgrade, but maybe it should be Terry Rozier because you can see even in the nine games that he's played so far, he is way better than whatever production you got from Kyle Lowry. Who is Kyle Lowry? Is he even going to play in the NBA again? He hasn't shown up in Charlotte. You haven't heard any news of him getting bought out yet. I mean, maybe it'll happen soon. He'll probably go to Philly. That's what all the rumors say. But anyways, that man could not get to the rim. And it was, it's more clear than ever when you see Terry Rozier be able to get there as often as he does. Now, even though his shooting efficiency is terrible, like 
that's an understatement. It's awful. In fact, I don't think Terry Rozier is getting enough criticism for how bad he's been shooting. People are acting like nine games is a small sample size. It's not huge, but it's at a point where I'm starting to get slightly concerned. I don't think we could just sit here and say, oh, I know he'll get it together. I know he'll shoot better. I don't know that. In fact, I think the year that he's having with Charlotte is maybe perhaps the outlier. I don't think he's as good as he was there. Now, do I think he's as bad as he's been? No, but it's time to kind of start getting better than what you're doing because he's now he's starting to force. He's not making the shots, so he's starting to force, takes tough step back threes and, and long twos. That's not how he should be playing basketball. And they traded a first round pick, which was half of their assets to get this man. So if he does not perform, that is a huge, huge misstep for the Miami Heat. Now, his, his uh, playmaking's been good. His rebound has been fine. I don't, I'm not even mad at the defense. I think he's been fine. But they traded a first-round pick to get a score, and he has not done that yet. So all of that to say, I do think the Heat are slightly better than last season. I, I think. Once again, I might change my mind tomorrow. They play the Boston Celtics. They can get the ass kicked and I'll be feeling terrible once again. But we know this Heat team can be inconsistent. The second half of the season could be way different. The shooting can go from near dead last to number one. You never know. Plus, you still got some guys on the buyout market. Just made a video about that yesterday. The guys I like the most are like Patty Mills, Danilo Gallinari, DeLon Wright, Thaddeus Young, Furkan Korkmaz. So there's names out there. While none of them are needle movers, they could some kind of uh, they could just be some nice pieces to kind of put on the edge and give you some more depth. So let me know what y'all think down below. This video didn't necessarily have a conclusion but it is kind of an internal struggle I'm having as a realistic Heat fan. So therefore, I'm very interested to hear what y'all say as well. That being said, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because it does help me out a lot. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace out. Look, pull up in the city trying to get that dead fast. Like, do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill him off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.